una y dos y dos una y dos una y dos Hello and welcome to Cortez NYC live stream the podcast This show broadcast out of New York City We are your hosts Cortez NYC and Carla de Puerto Rico And on the show we talk about art creativity city life from a latino perspective i'm a visual artist and i'm a singer and this is episode 60 as always you can find us on itunes stitcher podbean and spotify and also on social media on facebook instagram twitter and tumblr and don't forget my online store as always cortez nyc.bigcartel.com you can go on there and you'll find original art graffiti pins, stickers, and posters. Um, I actually just put a new piece up there, a Santa Claus piece. You guys got to check that one out. It's up for sale. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool looking like a barbarian Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So uh, log on and help support an artist. All right, and let's get on with the show. What, what, what? What, what, what? <laughs> Back in effect. Yes. Look at us. Look at us on a Christmas day. On a Christmas day. Wow. It's not snowing yet, though. No, it's not. It's cool. It's cool, but it's not. Snowing. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Did it snow last, last Christmas? Was mm. it snowing by last Christmas? I think so. I think something... I don't remember if it was last Christmas or the day of Christmas or Christmas Eve, but I know that there was some snow. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we are back. We are back. It is Christmas again. Day. And yes. we have another episode. This episode, we are going to talk about, we're going to continue our museum tour. Yes. We are going to talk about a museum that I, dis I discovered. When did I see this museum? I first came across this museum maybe. Five I want to. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah, about five, six years ago. Um, and this museum is called the National Museum of the American Indian. And it's in New York. It's downtown. It's at One Bowling Green. So it's down by the South Street Ferry. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the ferry that takes you to Staten Island. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the Staten Island Ferry. That's what I meant. Um, South Ferry. So... I was, you know, I'm always down there by the ferry and I saw this big building every time I would pass by from the train walking down to the ferry and I was always wondering what that building was and it's, it's got some really, really cool sculptures in the front, mm -hmm. um, but they're really nice. They photograph well and, and they're good for sketching. And finally one day I, I just poked my head in and I looked at it and it was, what it is, is it's a, it's a museum dedicated to all uh, Native American cultures. Mm -hmm. um, it tries to encompass all the natives, all the native cultures from North America, South America, even the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot. That's a lot. And wh when I first saw the title of it, I, I was like, well, I mean, you know, what is it going to show me? A bunch of teepees and like, yeah, I just yeah. imagine like corny, like. Some, yeah, like. Pilgr like pilgrims the, and stuff. And uh huh. Like. like, but also like the little section they have in the Met for right. Native Americans. It's not that big, and it's mostly the same items, just maybe different styles throughout that little section. So maybe you'll think, well, that's what I'm gonna encounter in this museum. Yeah, but I was wrong. This museum is awesome. This museum has a little bit of a lot. It's amazing how in in such a small I would say relatively small collection, like they, they capture a lot. Um, they capture everything from contemporary native art to mm -hmm. um, artifacts to probably some craft work, yeah. um, like probably not so old craft work. Um, and, uh, and then like all the different, you know, Mayans and Incas and and Aztec and, and Taino and, and everything that you could think mm -hmm. of also in there. It's incredible. Um, That's awesome also that we have the, that type of museum because sometimes, um, like I said, it can be 
people can just see it as if it was just one culture, but they right. were many cultures of Native Americans. Well, so, there, I mean, I, yeah, I was I was trying to definitely express my ignorance a second ago when I, <laughs> when I said when they said that when I read the title and mm -hmm. the title is you know the National Museum of the American Indian and all I thought of was a TP, right? Yeah, cowboys yeah. and Indians and a TP yeah. and like. Mm -hmm. You know, a headdress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's a shame. It, that shows my ignorance. Mm -hmm. And I'm and that's why this museum has to be. That's why I felt like if I'm gonna do one more museum on this tour, this will be my last stop. Yeah. I think this museum deserves a big shout out. Yeah. Um It's gonna be difficult for me to point out like what is a key item from the museum mm -hmm. that stands out because I've gone there twice and I don't think I. I don't think I can tell you that there's one real big standout item. I think the only thing that stands out to me um, as a icon for the museum would be the sculptures in the front and then the entrance when you come in. Yeah. There's a big circular, uh, it's like a, I don't know what's the word for that. Is it a ro rotunda maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing out a word, rotunda mm -hmm. guys, help me. I mean, uh, I think it's rotunda or I think it's like a lobby or something like that, but uh -huh. it's like a, It's like a circular room mm -hmm. um, that from that central point, you can go out into the different um, chambers, right? Mm -hmm. And the museum is on the outside of that room along, if you go out of that room, you know, it's, the exhibit is along the outside of it in a circle. So that's kind of an interesting layout. And I think that stands out. I took a, I took a few pictures from there. Um, at looking up and you see the ceiling has this like interesting lighting coming in. Mm -hmm. It looks like an eyeball if mm -hmm. you just look at it uh, from a certain angle, especially with a wide angle lens. It, it looks really cool. So I think that's a standout feature from the museum that makes it memorable in my head. Yeah. But the artifacts and all that, I'm not so familiar with. It, it just all kind of blends in. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to pinpoint one piece of it. Let me start by just giving you a little bit of description. Um, New York, uh, the National Museum of the American Indian uh, in New York at the George Gustav Hay Center is located within the historic Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House. Mm -hmm. The museum's permanent and temporary exhibitions as well as a range of public programs including music and dance, performances, films, and symposium Uh, explore the diversity of the native people of the Americas. The admission is free. That's a big plus. Yeah, that's great. Right? Um, uh, it's at Bowling Green Stop, the Bowling Green train station. Mm -hmm. uh, right out of the train station. Just the, where the train ends, that's where the right museum then. is. Yeah. Um, on Off the four or the five train. Um, and what else can I tell you? From? I can tell, tell you some of the current exhibits that are going on. So the one that, I guess the one big exhibit that is the permanent ongoing exhibit that stands out is called Infinity of Nations. Mm. Um, Infinity of Nations, art and history in the collections of the National Museum of the American Indian. This is like the, the permanent collection, mm -hmm. the main one. Yeah. This spectacular permanent exhibition of some of 700 works of native art from throughout North, Central and South America demonstrates the breadth of the museum's renowned collection and highlights the historic importance of many of these iconic objects. Chosen to illustrate the ge geographic and chronological scope of the museum's collection, Infinity of Nations opens with a display of headdresses, signifying the sovereignty of native nations. These works include a magnificent Kayapo Kruk Kruk T a macaw and heron feather ceremonial headdress. Focal point objects representing each region include, um, and I'm not gonna start with these words, so I'm just gonna say <laughs> a crow, okay, because they put it, they saved me, they put the word crow there. A crow robe illustrated with warrior's exploits, a detailed Mayan limestone bas relief depicting a ball player, an elaborately beaded Inuit I'm gonna try that word, <laughs> or a woman's inner parka, um, made for the mother of a newborn baby, mm. a Mapuche coltrung or hand drum depicting the cosmos, 
Uh, a carved and painted chef's headdress depicting a killer whale with a raven emerging from its back, created and worn by Willie Seaweed. Um, an anthropomorphic ship <laughs> I'm not going to do all these words. It's crazy. <laughs> or water vessel from Peru. Um, a basket decorated with a Spanish coin motif. An ancient mortar from Pueblo Bonito in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico. A gourd carved with a detailed picture of a battle of Arica by Mariano Flores Cananga, Quechua. And an early Anishani man's outfit complete with headdress, leggings, shirt, sash, and jewelry. Mm. The exhibition concludes with the works of by native artists including Alan Hauser, Warm Springs, Chiriquai Apache, and Rick Bartow, Mad River Wyatt. Um, so this is the main the main exhibit, and the, the what they're saying is that at the end the exhibit concludes with the modern artists. Mm-hmm. Um, the modern pieces are really cool because uh, they have some sculptural pieces that still feel traditional. Yeah. So they did a, they they chose native artists who are still using the native style, but then incorporating it into a modern art style. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think it was that whole. I I was mesmerized. I, I know we went there one day. I went there once, and then we went there with the kids, right? And I went there to sketch, and mm-hmm. I put the boys to sketch. I think I think they sketched there as well. And I remember sketching those artifacts and all this stuff, and I was like. I never really look at this so much. Like I need to come back and draw it more because yeah. I know that when I sketch sculptures and, and even the, the headdresses and all that, yeah. you know, I can sit there and follow all the craftsmanship mm-hmm. and really appreciate the craftsmanship by sitting there and trying to draw it. Right, right. And it makes me really understand the work that went into it. Yeah. And and then I, you know, by the time I'm done sketching a few of those things, my my mood slows down and then I'm actually paying attention and I'm reading and then I'm starting to really read and, and take in the information and the history behind the objects and I think it's really educational. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, um, it's one of a kind. I'm, I'm really surprised I had never come across that before. I'm sure I'm telling people out there and they're probably like, hey, I've been there a million times. What are you talking <laughs> about? But yeah. I, I, it's one that I, I, I always walk past. If I wanted to know, like what you said, if I wanted to know about Native Americans, I probably would go to like the Museum of Natural History and be like, uh, or or the Met and be like, let me see old, you know, North American Indian art. Um, Yeah, it's very educational because like we said, there's not that many detailed information about Native Americans and to know also the different cultures and to know the details of their items and artifacts, the difference between all of them. It's it's very good to know. Yeah. Um, they have another exhibit uh, in, the, in the same museum. It's called um, Circle of Dance. Hmm. And this one um, is interesting because it, it's all about their, their uh, native dances. So it says, hmm. Circle of Dance presents native dance as a vibrant, meaningful, and diverse form of cultural expression featuring 10 social and ceremonial dances from throughout the Americas. The exhibition illuminates the significance of each dance and highlights the unique characteristics of its movement and music. Music and dance have always been essential to the spiritual, cultural, and social lives of Native peoples. Unique forms of ritual, ceremonial, and social dancing remain a vital part of contemporary community life. Everywhere dance is found, it is accompanied by distinctive Native musical styles, Rich music and dance traditions create strong ties that bind American Indian communities to all living things, to the earth, spirit, world, and when people have deep ancestral claims to their dances, to the past. Uh, presenting, all right. So yeah, I mean, that's another interesting thing. They they have a few images of like, you know, full fully dressed in, in native, you know, attire, then yeah. people dancing and all that. That would be nice to see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, the one that we were just looking at right now that is actually going on right now, and I guess this is one that I'll shout out and it makes perfect perfect sense for the podcast, is um, as of July until October of 2019, they will have a Taino special exhibit. Ooh, 
nice. <clears throat> so the Taino one is called Taino Native Heritage and Identity in the Caribbean. Taino et Herencia e Identidad Indígena en el Caribe. Um, and I, it's a special, you know, exhibit just mm -hmm. for Tainos, which they, they didn't have that before, right? When, when yeah, we no. went, they had a map, you said, right? I don't remember going, but I do remember that, I mean, I've seen online that they have a map where they show different tribes Okay. of indigenous people Got you. throughout the Americas and the specific names that they will use. Got you. But I think I've never been inside this museum, actually. Really? Yeah. Ah, so maybe you didn't come in with the kids. That's no, it. I didn't. Got you. <laughs> You're probably working. All right. Um, but yeah, so no, that, when we, then we, you and I definitely have to go and this yeah. is a perfect excuse for you to really go. Yeah. Um, I can't believe you haven't gone yet. Mm -hmm, I know. <laughs> All right, so yes, you definitely have to go. Now I'm speaking. Now you're part of the audience. Go sit with the audience. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm here listening. I'm like, yes, it's great information. <laughs> go, go, <laughs> go sit with the audience. Oh, okay. Go. Sorry, sorry, guys. I take gotta your, go. Take your headphones off. <laughs> um, no, so the Taino Native Heritage and Identity in the Caribbean exhibit. Across the Caribbean, there is growing interest in the historical, cultural, and genetic legacies of Native peoples. In increasing numbers, individuals, families, and organizations are affirming their Native ancestry and identifying themselves as Taino. Over this past 30 years, a diverse Taino movement has taken form. This movement challenges the pre prevalent belief that Native people became extinct shortly after European colonization in the Greater Antilles. It is spurring a regeneration of indigenous identity with the racially mixed and culturally blended societies of Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico, as well as other areas of the Caribbean. <clears throat> in, this ex in this exhibition, visitors will explore the rural roots of the Taino movement and find information about the legacy of native peoples throughout the Spanish-speaking Caribbean islands and their U.S. diasporas. Hmm. And so it's <clears throat> it's a, a museum that I think it's a trip that's going to not just inform you about the past and like some sort of uh, relics and cultural mm -hmm. thing and all that, but it's going to inform you about yourself, which and is interesting. And it's something that is ongoing because it's this new mentality and thinking that native people they're not really extinct and more in the caribbean that we still have dna and you you can see it in our fissures and maybe we don't know details about the culture itself but that it's still alive that indigenous yeah. people and native americans from the caribbean is still we're still alive and we're still here yeah i mean The thing about um, the museum, I saw a lot of probably Spanish people. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that they were Hispanic. I, you know, I didn't really hear them talking, but yeah. you know, going through the museum and looking at things, and and myself, my kids, them, and all, and I'm looking at all of us, and I'm like, how many probably Latinos come in here and see the stuff here, and they learning, right. they're learning, and they're identifying with it, yeah, mm -hmm. and they feel connected to it, and. And I just started realizing that this is a really important um, place of of information for yeah. for people to like. I don't know. I, I guess to like kind of build on 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 a sense of history that maybe they don't know about. You yeah, know, mm -hmm. definitely about themselves. Um, yeah, and and uh, so like we got to make a trip. We're gonna gotta plan that out. Yes, we will uh, this weekend. Let's <laughs> do it. Come on, guys, everybody, let's go. Okay, let's go. We'll meet in... <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, the other thing about the museum is, and I think that it's in, an interesting point, when, when you look at their website and you look at the about section, mm -hmm. it, says that, um, it says that there was a, there was a point in, in 1989. Oh, I think the museum is part of the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know if you know what the Smithsonian is. No. So it's the Smith. The Smithsonian is like a, it's an institution. The Smithsonian Smithsonian institution. It's an old institution, and it's like a, a, a big organization that has museums and, oh, okay. and 
cultural, rele- culturally relevant things. Okay. And they're part of that, right? So this museum is one of many under their umbrella. Um, but I think this museum was like open, I think, in 18 something. Oh, wow. Or ni- 18 or 19 something. I think 19 something. But it seems that in, in 1989, which wow. is not that long ago, mm-hmm. um, the museum uh, became committed to bringing native voices to what the museum writes and presents. That's nice. So maybe originally it wasn't, mm-hmm. but in at some point in the 80s, yeah. they began to incorporate more of like native, maybe, I don't know if it was native curators, mm-hmm. native artists, you know, Maybe native people. Native people to come in and, and kind mm-hmm. of give their voice and say, hey, yeah. this, this is, is what correct. they... This exactly. is correct. Exactly. This is factual. This is not... So that's really interesting. So they say here, um, has been steadfast... Steadf- the museum has been steadfastly committed to bringing native voices to what the museum writes and presents, whether on site at one of the three uh, museum venues, through the museum's publications, or via the internet. Mm-hmm. The museum also is also dedicated to acting as a resource for the hemisphere's native communities Mm -hmm. and to serving the greater public as an honest and thoughtful conduit to native cultures, present, past, and in all their riches, all the richness, depth, and diversity. So they're really trying to build on that um, authenticity. And then that makes sense for this new exhibition that they're going to have because it's, um, like I said, it's an ongoing thing um, of having the culture and having people from Taino descent to come and say and express the information that they need to spread. Do, do, have you gone to anything like this, uh, like a Native American, uh, American or Native Caribbean or anything mm-hmm. or Taino museum in Puerto Rico? Do they have that? Yeah, they do. What, they, what, what is it called? Well, they have one that is called El Museo de las Americas. Okay. Um, that's in Old San Juan. It's a small collection, though, and it's um, it talks about Native American, but also a little bit about Spaniards, if I'm correct. And then there's another big, um, like, outdoors museum and indoors that is called El Parque Tibes, if I'm remembering the name correctly. It's in Ponce. Okay. Um, and this... Museum, um, it's out. They have an outdoor uh, section where they have the boillos and the um, location where they will do their ceremonies and dances and stuff like that. So you can walk through it. I sometimes, like to see that. yeah. Sometimes they'll have maybe um, a representation of how it was at that time. So they have people dress up as indigenous people. Did we go to the Americas do, one? Yeah, we went to the Americas one okay. in Old San Juan. I do remember that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's in that, that big they, building. The building that it has the... That was a nice one. The outdoor... It, it doesn't have a roof. That's right. Correct, correct. That now I remember. Like yes, a, yes, yes. I forgot. Like a rectangle. I forgot. It, that, I remember that now. Mm-hmm. That's pretty big, too. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice... That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Th- that one's uh, in Museo de las Americas? Museo de las Americas, yeah. And that's in Old San Juan. Okay. And the other right, one... You- right besides El Morro. And the um, one you were just talking about before I interrupted you, I'm so sorry for that. Es in Ponce. Okay. Eh, el Parque de Ceremonial Tibes. That's how it's called. Parque Ceremonial Tibes. And ceremonial means ceremonial, which means that they will recreate the ceremonies that they will have. And, and they also have an indoor section where is um, all the um, attires and the artifacts that they collected through the years. Mm. And I'm sure they have others, but those are the two big ones. When was the last time that you went to, to the one in Ponce? 2011. Okay. Yeah. All right, maybe next time we go down, we should try to take a drive down to Ponce and check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Ponce, they have a lot of art, so it's a good place to go and exp- explore around Puerto Rico. All right, you guys. This ended my museum tour. I hope you guys appreciated all these episodes with the museum tour. Next time for Art Talk, we're going back to making some art, That's getting great. creative. On our own. Si no estás haciendo todo igual, no tiene ningún color en base a lo que hace. Separa menos tiempo. 
Culture talk, Carla. Yes, culture talk. What are we going to talk about this culture talk? So this culture talk, we're going to de- review a movie. Um, and the movie is called Nothing Like the Holidays. Okay. And first of all, I'm going to give you a little description of a movie, the plot. Nothing like the holidays. Nothing like the holidays. This title is always hard for me to remember because I've searched it a few times and every time I, I want to say, I always want to be saying something like the holidays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I never think of the word nothing like the holidays. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, the little plus summer, plot summary that they have in the IMBD. Wait a second. I usually do this part, but go ahead. <laughs> he said, no, but <laughs> wait until I say this. This is super short. Okay. He says, <laughs> you're, stealing, a, you're stealing my job, Carla. <laughs> sorry. A Puerto Rican family living in the area of Humboldt Park in West Chicago face what may be their last Christmas together. That's all he says. Really? Yeah. Let's this see. this movie, okay. The movie, I'll just skip ahead. And then the Hit. synopsis is super long, and it has spoilers. It's the whole it story. Tells the, the whole synopsis. movie. Yeah. All right. This movie is weird. Not it not the weird. movie. Not the movie. The the production or whatever the hell happened to this movie, as far as the distribution production. This is where where the movie system mm-hmm. screws with a movie. Yeah. Okay. Because this was, this is a good movie. I think that the, it can be a classic. Yeah, let, I'll just I'll just tell you guys right now. The review is movie's good. Yeah, that's the review. The review is it's a fucking good movie. I've seen it, I think four times or five times already. I've and seen it three times. Yeah, and I, and it's entertaining. Yeah, it has all the regular old Hollywood cliche, rom com, Christmas, Christmas, during Christmas yeah. all that stuff. Holidays, stuff. family feel good stuff. It has all the cliches that you want. Family drama. And then on top of that, it's it's got other things that are interesting sh- coded on top that we'll talk about. Um, the actors, it's got a wide cast. You're going to recognize a lot of the actors in it. Yeah. It, even though it's the, a whole like you know Latino cast or whatever, and then you also have you know a few others that are not Latino, but you're going to recognize these people. Yeah. So I'm like, they have a, a big cast. They have it's a it's a well-made movie. Mm-hmm. Why is it so hard to find? It's online. so hard to find online. Why is it hard to find information about it? There's no reviews on no it. No reviews. No, nothing really in YouTube either, like about trailers or or little clips on YouTube. Nothing about it. And and I, I don't even know if it comes up when you search like Christmas movies. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's a yeah. Christmas movie. Uh-huh. And it's, it doesn't show up. Yeah. And what I think about the movie itself is that it's... Uh, a full complete movie because there's so many stories going on at the same time um, within this family which is the main story is that spoiler alert <laughs> the main story is that the um, everybody gets together in their parents house so the mother and the father they live together um, their children are old already but they all come back for this Christmas Um, and one of them, the youngest son, go, uh, was in war. So this time he's returning from war and meeting with his family. The oldest son is a very successful Wall Street guy. So he's in New York. And then the, other, the daughter is an actress. And she's trying to pursue her career in acting in Los Angeles and everything else so everybody all, want, the, all the th- members of the family are coming back are coming back to their house to their to home. The house in Chicago to reunite mm-hmm. at that family home yes with the patriarch the father and the mom and, the, and all mm-hmm. that and that's when all hell breaks loose exactly the table. because they all have their own stories and secrets that they don't really want to tell anybody because of the expectations that their parents have For them, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, more specifically, the the children, 
they don't want to tell their own truth because they know that their parents are expecting something else from them. And when you say children, I mean, we're talking about 20 something. Yeah, yeah. 20 or even 30 something. Yeah, some are 30 something, some are 20 something. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, th this is typical of all of these movies, mm -hmm. whether they are uh, a typical Hollywood white cast, mm -hmm. uh, a black movie, an African American movie. Mm -hmm you know, with an African-American cast and they have like this family reunion type of thing. Like all these, all the genres. And if they're going to cast an Asian, you know, a movie, movie yeah, reunion, family reunion, same. it'll be saying they all have secrets, family secrets, don't reveal it. Yeah. But so I get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Bollywood movies are like that. Yeah. I get it. Um, I think what makes this one interesting, specifically for me, and I think not just because they're quote unquote Latino, because they're, 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 they're portraying the, the family as the story is written. They're supposed to be a Puerto Rican family. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's interesting to me is that they're, it's an urban feeling. Yeah. And that comes across. And if you are somebody who is raised, not necessarily, you don't have to be Spanish to enjoy this or Latino to enjoy this. It, you know, if you were raised in the city and you're familiar with Latinos within the city and all that, this is very familiar to you. Yes. You've been to a friend's house. You've been to a party. You've been to a Christmas party or, or dinner or something. You've you've seen these kind of people. You hear the conversations. You hear the way you see the way the actors are acting with each other, and it's so natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that what that makes you feel like this is a real place. This is just real people hanging out and then delivering me a drama. Yeah, yeah. You know? And and another thing is that, like you said, you don't have to be Puerto Rican or Latino to enjoy this because. If you live in the city, you know what is a bodega and yeah. who owns the bodega. So in this story, the father, the patriarch, is the one that owns the bodega. And he hopes that his son, the youngest son that just came from war, um, stays working in the bodega when he passed away or whenever he cannot work. Right. So things like that are things that we all recognize if you were raised in a city area or in a place where um, you can see this type of environments. So this is something that is really nice about the movie. Another thing is that they, when the family gets together, they go into specifics of what is it that Puerto Rican families eat during Christmas and holidays right. because the mom is all about the coquito, the daughter-in-law, which is Jewish. Is, um, she's played by Debra... Debra Messing. Debra Messing. Yeah. Uh, she's the one from Will and Grace yes. and that other show where she was a cop or something, a detective. Yeah, I forgot the, the name. That was something a good... Adventures of Laura. Adel yeah, something like that. Something yeah. about Laura. Yeah. She's funny. Um, so... What I was saying? Oh, so she's the Jewish. Coquito. So yeah. she's Jewish and the... And the so she's Jewish and she's married to this Puerto Rican guy. Played, and Played by John Leguizamo mm -hmm. from, uh, what is it? We just reviewed it, the history of... Latin history for morons. Latin history for morons <laughs> and uh, all the Broadway shows. and Yeah, and else. he has been in other movies. And a ton of movies. Yes. So the movie really tries to portray the Puerto Rican culture during the holidays um, with the food with the traditions. Um, the traditions, they try to do kind of like a parranda yeah. and all the gets together that gets, um, all the get, they get together with all the family, which is also something that is very Puerto Rican. Even if you are in the United States, you know that Boricuas, they're like that. Yeah, like they have, they have a parranda which is like caroling. Yeah. And they try to represent it by having them actually carol, but with a Latin rhythm, which is kind of funny. Because mm -hmm. a parranda is a little more like an actual fest, almost like a carnival. Yeah, parranda. Yeah, and and it's not necessarily with Christian or religious no. songs. It's more about like get everybody up, getting together, get up and get and, yeah. and party and, and party and dance and yeah. everything else. Um, but the most important thing about the movie is the two most important plots during the movie. It's the father. The father, um, it's sick. This what? is a spoiler alert. The but oh yeah. The father is the father is sick, and he is keeping that a secret from his wife, and his wife thinks that he's cheating on her. 
while, while he's going to see the doctors to hide the fact that he's going to see a doctor, he's sneak, sneaking off to do that, making excuses of where he was, and now she's thinking he's cheating on me. So what she did is that in front of the whole family <laughs> on the dinner table, because he got a phone call right there when he was going to do the Brindis, the, the, the cheers, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> um, she said, you know what? I'm divorcing your father. And she told everybody right there. And everybody's like, no, what's going on? What are you talking about? Are you serious? And she was like, yeah, I'm divorcing your father. And what was funny for me to me in that part is that the oldest son reacts very childish, like, you guys are disgusting. What are you doing? You're throwing away 30-something years of marriage. And if you see this guy, this is an adult, 30-something years old. Yeah. For him to be acting like that. And he's married, so he... He's should mar- understand. And he's married with his own issues and his own problems yes, and exactly. his own marriage. Yeah, it was funny. That was funny. Yeah. And that's typical in a family like that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you'll have that. And the second plot is the youngest son that comes from war. Because he just came from war. He doesn't know what he's going to do. during When he was in war, um, his partner died. So his friend uh, that he was working with died. And supposedly... It was kind of like his fault because he couldn't do anything to save him. So he was feeling guilty and he didn't know what to do with himself. When he came back also, he had a girlfriend that he left before and he was trying to get back together with her. But it's a whole plot uh, like difficulty because also his father wants him to run the bodega, but he doesn't really want to do that. So those are the two most important plots throughout the movie even though there are little other stories of each um, children throughout the movie so I mean the movie exactly it's full it's a full movie it's a full movie every single character in there has a lot of story and it's intertwining stories obviously because they're all part of the same family Um, but yeah those are the two main stories it's the father and the son because the bodega is a he wants it to become a father son bodega yeah and basically it's all the things that he does from the beginning of the movie to the end to eventually at the end spoilers you know they Reveal. everybody reconcile mm-hmm. everybody reconciles everything's revealed everything comes to light everybody comes together everything works out and but it's the trip along the way yeah. it's the conversations and the jokes and the scenes that show the personalities along the way yeah and that's what i was going to say don't think that this movie is all drama throughout the movie oh, you have luis guzman um <laughs> playing the know-it-all then super crazy cousin yeah, that always funny. has a comment for everything yeah um and so, he's, he's he's funny without being overbearing exactly Sometimes he's funny he's, with his own personality it, it's not even like he's trying yeah it's just him it's just him exactly they, they didn't like really force any lines on him or make or make him like force like mm-hmm. say some dialogue that's like oh just stop talking right nah he's they just gave him just enough you could tell that he's saying all of that from his heart he's just <laughs> <laughs> he's just yeah. bothering the actors you know exactly so <laughs> he makes it a light and then the whole com- the whole conversations and because it's kind of like a reunion yeah. um, it makes it that they have their own moments where they laugh and they remember when they were kids and right um, yeah. Which, which that I've I've been in that kind of situation, and I know that it's situation. Even with my friends now, when we get together, mm-hmm. um, we're talking, and, and we will just end up having conversations where we start talking about things from the past, and you know, and you don't realize I, when you have those friends, you don't realize how much time flies. And next thing you know, you're you're reunited, and you're like talking about something that happened ten years ago, exactly twenty years ago, and and you're like reminiscing, and and it's like. It's like you never grew up with them. You could still be young. Yeah. Even though on the outside, I think that's what they showed. Because even the um, the older son. Yeah. He's trying to tell the youngest son, oh, but you went to war and that's all you got to say. Like, you never grew up. But then his reaction. But he, and he acts. His but he, he acts totally immature like he's still a, a punk he's still yeah. like a dumb punk kid like he never, but he's in a suit <laughs> exactly like he never got anything yeah. about life and family but he understood how to get out there and be in New York and be a successful Wall Street guy yeah no it, it, it's good it's good in that sense uh, um, what about the actors that are in it do you have a list of the actors yes so Alfred Molina Luis Guzman Freddy Rodriguez Elizabeth Peña 
John Leguizamo and Deborah Missing. All right, cool. All right, guys, so go check out the movie. Nothing, nothing like the holidays. Nothing like the holidays. And Merry Christmas, guys. You wanted me to teach you, right? Hablando español. Yes. Carla, what do you got for me this week? Is you think this might be the last hablando español of the year? Yes, I think this is the last one. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we're going to try for more. Okay. At least one more. Let's see if we can get one in before the. New we'll years. see. What do you got? So first word is educational. How do you say educational in Spanish? Educational. Educational is. I would say educativo. Yes, it is. Okay, educativo. Good. Um, Got how it. How do you say yeah. infinity? Infinity, as in the infinity stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one, I think, is infinidad. Yeah? Yes, yes, that is right. Okay, next one. How do you say spectacular? Spectacular. Yes. This is where the either it's ex or es, or is it just spectacular? Ah, I don't know. Es espectacular. Espectacular. Es. Espectacular. Es. Espectacular. Okay. Got it. Spectacular. Perfect. Espectacular. Next word. Yes. How do you say permanent? Permanent. Permanent. Permanente. Yes. Got it. How do you say Nailed it. geographic? Geographic. Um, geographic is. Geograph. Geographic. How do you say geographic? <laughs> Why are you repeating it like I'm on a spelling bee? Geographic, geográfico. Yes, that is ¿Cómo right. ¿Cómo es? Dilo tú. Geográfico. 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 Care geográfico. Nailed it. Yes. How do you say? Yes. Headdress. Headdress. Headdress, as in the uh, native headdress. Headdress. Yes. yes. Headdress. I don't know a word for headdress. I don't think it exists. I don't think there is a word for it. Well, I actually looked that up because I didn't know either. Oh. And it's tocado. Tocado. That's to- how it's called. Tocado? Yes. Tocado. But tocado is... Tocado is not necessarily a native headdress. It's just a headdress. Yes. Okay. Any type of headdress. Tocado. Tocado. So a native headdress? Would probably be like tocado de plumas or tocado indígena. Got you. I guess. All right. So headdress specifically, just the headdress, no matter what kind it is, tocado. Yes. Got uh, it. How do you say yes. feathers? Feathers, plumas. Yes. Is there another word for it? No. Okay. How do you say ceremonials? Ceremonial. Ceremonial is ceremonial. Yes, that's right. What? How do you say gathering? Gathering? Yeah. Gathering, uh, like a re- like a reunion? Yes. Like reunion. Yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so gathering is reunion. That's right. Okay. No, no reunion. No. Reunion. Yes. Okay. What's a reunion? Is in the liver? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you say? Yes. Matriarch. Ma- matriarch. Matriarch. Sorry. Matriarch. Matriarch. I don't know. Ma- matriarco. Matriarca. Oh, okay. Matriarca. 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 Yes. No malcriar. 
matriarca. Matriarca. Got it. Matriarca, matriarch. And how do you say patriarch? Patriarch. Patriarch is patriarco. Patriarca. Oh, so they're both a? Yes. Patriarca. So matriarca y patriarca. Yes. Matriarca, patriarca. Yes. Got it. That's right. And right. that was my last word. <laughs> That's it? That's it. That's it? That is it. <laughs> That's it? Sorry, Carla. Do you have any words? Um, you know what? Sticking to this holiday theme. Um, I don't know if we ever have spoken about um things like oh, I don't know. How do you say snowman? Snowman. Is it um muñeco de nieve? Yeah? Is that what you guys say? I don't know, I'm asking you. Yes. Okay, did you ever make, did you guys ever say in Puerto Rico, let's make a muñeco de nieve? Obvio, no. <laughs> we don't have fucking snow. <laughs> <laughs> Un muñeco de arena. Let's make a Un sand. Un muñeco de arena. Let's make a sand, yeah, sand exactly. man. Sand castle. What about snowflake? Snowflake is copo de nieve. Copo de nieve? Yes. Not copa de nieve. No, copo. Copo de nieve. All right, yeah. cool. I never, I never thought of snowflake in Spanish. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. cool. Okay, wrap that one up. Yes. Nice and tight, like a Christmas gift under the tree. Oh my God. <laughs> How many gifts you got this year? Oh my God, Santo is so generous. <laughs> <laughs> With me too. Yeah. It was awesome. It was a Christmas miracle. Well, I hope you guys are all enjoying your Christmas day. We did enjoy ours. Yeah, it was nice very and peaceful, relaxing. Very relaxing. And got a lot of rest. And, mm -hmm. um, Avoid colds or anything like that, guys, because yes. it's catchy. Uh, yes. But we'll be back next next episode with some more stuff to talk about. Yeah, a lot of new information for you guys. <laughs> <laughs>